Of course, we've been highlighting uh, this week in the past several weeks plans to reopen uh, the economy across multiple states here in the U.S. as just about all 50 of them now move forward with reopening plans. Uh, yesterday, the president gave an update on those plans and particular uh, address concerns that we might, if we do see cases continue to rise, like we're starting to see uh, that there could be another wave of closures here and the president hit back against that during his tour of a Ford factory in Michigan. Here's what he had to say. People say that's a very distinct possibility. It's standard. And we're going to put out the fires. We're not going to close the country. We're going to put out the fires. Trump there, not something you see all the time, but his point very clear. No second wave closures to be expected. And for more on the reality uh, that we are seeing play out, I want to bring on Yahoo Finance's Kristen Myers, who has, as always, been digging into uh, the data. Kristen? I'm like becoming the reopening reporter, Zach. Actually, <laughs> the president, and after saying that very brief statement there, said, quote, whether it's an ember or a flame, we're going to put it out, but we're not closing our country. So being very aggressive and very forceful there and making sure that the that the country, that each state reopens their economies and essentially welcomes business. And the reason for that, frankly, might be the pretty staggering unemployment numbers that we've been seeing as we saw just jobless companies coming at over 2.4 million. And we got some new numbers today out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Nevada had the highest unemployment rate in April, 28.2%, Zach. That's followed by Michigan at 22.7%. Now, Michigan, I want to kind of add there, has been one of those remaining states um, in a state of lockdown, though they are opening up this week, which I'll get to in just a moment. And Hawaii rounding out that top uh, state unemployment figures at 22.3%. According to BLS, the rate in 43 states set record highs, which is incredible. And as we've been discussing this week, last week, the week before, essentially states have been slammed across the country because of these lockdown orders. So now it's the holiday weekend. We're starting to see all 50 states are moving into some sort of phase of reopening. Phase one for many states, even in New York. We are going to be reopening the city um, as early as the beginning of June. As I mentioned just a moment ago, Michigan reopening this week uh, for business. Michigan was one of the hardest hit states. Um, Dr. Fauci, even the director of the NIAID, who's kind of been the leading medical voice in this coronavirus crisis, said that now is the time to reopen the economy. And as I mentioned, New York, great news there. They're also reopening. Uh, Governor Cuomo saying that the cases are now lower at the beginning, uh, are now lower, are lower now, excuse me, than at the beginning of this crisis. And I want to kind of, you know, put this into context again, the numbers for everyone. Here in the United States, we've got almost 1.6 million positive cases, death rate about 95 Thousand. But I want to kind of take everyone's attention to a very important graph, a very important metric, as you were saying, that governors might be using. And that's the rate of positive cases. And we are seeing that number trend downward. So obviously, we're seeing those numbers of cases continue to increase because the test, um, the testing is starting to increase. But that rate, if you divide that number out, the amount of positive cases as a part of the total is on the decline, which is incredibly good news. And part of the reason combined with, you know, the economy, I think, Zach, that's really why you're starting to see a lot of governors and a lot of states being comfortable here with reopening, even ahead of this pretty big holiday weekend where we might see some of the numbers start to spike in a couple of days. We'll have to check that out. But so, so far, it looks like pretty good news uh, just across the country when it comes to the cases. All right. The latest there. I, I, I do think it is interesting that Dr. Fauci in that interview with CNBC was using the language. Uh, now's the time. Otherwise, we'll see irreparable damage. We did hear similar thinking from Secretary Mnuchin earlier uh, in the week, saying that it would result in permanent damage. So very interesting parallels there between their assessments. But Kristen Myers, appreciate that update. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.